In this video, we're going to go into the theory of chassis layout and how it impacts the quality of the amplifier and if the design is really even a viable one. Like I said in an earlier video, we're pretty restricted on where we can put the output transformers, which we've decided we're going to go here and then our power transformer was going to be turned 90 degrees over here. But we do have a lot of leeway on where we put the output tubes, the volume controls, and the power switch and other parts that are necessary for the amplifier to operate. There's some basic rules we need to follow and while some may need to be bent a little bit, some are more important than others. The most important one, in my honest opinion, is that the heater windings cannot be near the low voltage signal pathway. If you put the heater windings near the low voltage, which is between the RCA jacks, the volume controls, and the driver tubes, you're going to have hum in the amplifier, or likely to, and there's no way to resolve it once you've built the amplifier. I initially was planning on putting the tubes in front of the output transformers and putting the volume control in the middle and putting the power switch over here somewhere. But when I started looking at this layout, the problem with this is even if we put the RCA jacks here or even if we put them in the back, you're going to be running them right up near this potential. We're going to run them to the potentiometer, but then the heater windings are going to have to go right by this potentiometer. Given that this amplifier is not a very thick chassis, that when you put this in the middle, there's not a lot of room around it to be running heater windings. We look at the inside, we determine pins 4 and 5 are the heater windings. And so we're going to want to put them, put the sockets in the amplifier angled like this so that the windings will go over to this edge see if I can tilt this up over to this edge actually let me turn this around I think it'll work better okay they're gonna go up to this edge and then across down this corner to the heater filaments out of this transformer so by doing this and if we have the volume control right here in the middle they're going to be going right next to this potentiometer, which is a bad idea. So the other rule that's important is to know that because tubes get hot, you should try to have the spacing between, especially output tubes, one and a half times their, the diameter of the envelope. And when I measure these tubes, they are 20 millimeters. So that means we need a 30 millimeter gap between the two tubes to make sure they don't overheat. So I started thinking about what if we shift the tube sockets over there and put the potentiometer down here on this end and have the RCA jacks here on the side. By doing this, let me flip this over and kind of show you what the layout I'm looking at. We're, we're only having to shift this tube over just a little bit, about right there, because we still want to keep this tube away from where this AC filtering is being done. This tube would have to get shifted over, and if we get 30 millimeters, we can move this tube over we have them about like that that's enough space between them for them to cool 
Then we can put our potentiometer down here on the end, like this. And then if we put our RCA jacks vertically, like here on the side, there's a very short path between the RCA jack and the potentiometer, likely to the point where we don't even need to use shielded wire to connect the RCA jacks to the potentiometer. Then we can run the heater windings up in the upper corner of this upper edge from this tube here, run them around to where the filament voltage is, and they're nowhere near where the signal pathway is. Then we can run shielded wire out of the potentiometer up, get out of the light here, up and over and connect to the terminal strip that will be along the back. I'm planning on putting some things like this along the back of the tubes so they can come around and connect to these and then jump over to the tube and have the cathodes come over and have one of these for each output tube. I really feel like this is a much better layout than what I was initially thinking. And then the other part of this will be that by doing this, the potentiometer and the power, power switch can be centered one inch from each edge. And I checked to make sure that, that, this, that this lip here, let me see if I can get where you can see it. This lip here isn't going to get tangled up in either the switch or the potentiometer. So I think now I have a good solid layout where this amp doesn't violate any of my rules about the tubes being too close together, the either tube being too close to the power supply, and keeping the heater windings away from the signal path. And I still think this is going to be a really cool looking amp. I don't think this asymmetrical with the tubes kind of in the center, even though they're not perfectly centered, I think it's going to look fine. And sometimes that um, function over form dictates the layout. So if you're building any amplifier, this is really a critical point in ensuring that you're doing things in a way that will ensure that the wiring's right because if you do this part wrong and you end up with an AC hum in the amplifier, there's no way to fix it without totally starting over from scratch. So this is the layout we're going to use. I'm going to get to final drilling all these holes, and then we're going to start assembling this thing. Hope you're enjoying this series. If you are, please subscribe, click the like button, and I'll see you at the next video.